Hello, I'm Stephen Bonner, and welcome to the final round. Joined, as always, by my sidekick, the man who makes the odds here, Mr. Matt Holt. And a big weekend for fight and a little turn of the tables where we get the Bellator on Friday, or sorry, the uh, UFC on Friday and Bellator on Saturday. But nonetheless, a, a big weekend of fights coming up, and there is some value to be found here. So let's start with that Bellator card. The Bellator card's awesome. UFC yeah. card, not so much. Yeah. And, and I'm happy to see Bellator back. It feels like it's been a while since we had a Bellator card. So, And this is a good one. Yeah, a Bellator card that was good. Yeah, the Bellator was card that was good. Yeah. Some re- name recognition. And, and right out of the gate here, we get a former UFC lightweight champion Benson Henderson, a minus $2 favorite against Patricky Pitbull. And what's interesting about Benson, and we all know his accolades in the UFC, He's 1-2 and two since he went to Bellator, lost to their lightweight champion Michael Chandler, lost to their welter, then welterweight champion Andre Koreshkov, and his only win was in a fight versus Patrizio Pitbull, the featherweight champion yep. currently in Bellator, in a fight where Patrizio tore his MCL in his knee. Hurt his leg. And otherwise, maybe he beats Benson in that fight too. See, yeah, and the, the Pitbull brothers, very similar styles, but I must say um, Patricio is probably the more talented of the two, yeah. but they're both big punchers. And right now you get uh, Patricky about a two-to-one dog at plus 185. Is that worth laying some money down? I, want, I definitely don't want Benson Henderson because he's looked so bad in Bellator, and I just, I'm not sure what he has left. And he, he doesn't have the striking. You know, you carry power with age and stuff, but he was never a power striker. Yeah. He was always a volume guy, out-wrestle you. Um, the problem here is the one thing that Benson, I think, has going for him is he's always been durable. Like, he doesn't get KO'd yeah, yeah, a lot. Yeah. I think he's only been KO'd once. Yeah, he's always in the fight. And if he's always in this fight, I'm not sure that Patricky, the rest of his skill set, to your point, he's not quite as good as Patrizio, the featherweight champion. I'm, I'm not sure he's good enough to win a decision. I mean, Patricky's lost twice to Derek Anderson, twice to Chandler. He just he doesn't win these big fights against top guys. And do you think this only being a three round fight favors Patricky? Because Benson's been in so many five rounders. Probably does. Because I think over that period of time, if we say, look, Patricky's not going to knock him out, uh, it's harder for Patricky to win three or four rounds in a five rounder than maybe it is to somehow win two in a three rounder. That's a good point. There's a couple good underdogs on this card. This might not be a bad one, but the one I kind of like is Paul Daly. He's a a two-and-a-half-to-one underdog. You get him at plus 240 right now, and he's fighting Lorenz Larkin, and this is going to be a kickboxing match. I have a good feel. And uh, really, in a kickboxing match, I I think if it were a pick him, I probably wouldn't touch it, but I'm thinking of laying a small play on Paul Daly at a a two-and-a-half-to-one dog. So I was the first person in the whole marketplace, I monitor about 70 books globally, to actually put these odds up. Uh, and I made this fight Lorenz Larkin minus 360. And, and maybe I'm like biased against Paul Daly uh, because he does lose to wrestlers, Roy McDonald, and anybody who wrestles him he has major problems with. Yes. And Lorenz Larkin won't. It's no. going to be a kickboxing match, to your point. But I just I couldn't get over the fact in my head that Daly never beats anybody good, right? And and to me, Paul Daly's a guy that if he ever really took his career serious, first of all, he'd stop hitting people after the bell, but second of all, he would uh, have cut weight and, and made it to 55 because he has the body. He's only 5'9". He belongs at 55, and he's not a huge and turbo And how tall villain. is Lorenz? He's like 5'11 or 6 foot. So he's going to have a 2.5-inch reach advantage. It's like an 8-inch... I mean, eight-inch reach advantage, two-and-a-half-inch height advantage, and Lorenz Larkin is a really good kickboxer, too. This is a guy who beat Jorge Masvidal, beat Robbie Lawler in strike force. But uh, on the other hand, he has been knocked out by guys like Constas Philippou. Yeah. Um, and, and people on paper, you think he would have beat um, Lorenz Larkin. Knocked who else? out Neil Magny in the first round. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, he, he has some losses on there that I, I went, oh, wow, Paul Daly probably would have won that fight. Yeah, I think, yeah, maybe. Maybe it's closer than I think it is because stylistically Paul Daly couldn't ask for a better match Yeah. for the fight. So maybe you're right. Maybe it is closer because um, I had thought about laying Lorenz Larkin here. Heavy wood. But I hate, you know, laying the heavy wood's uncomfortable. You're talking 560 to make 200. 
uh, or 840 to make 300, those start to get scary if the fight's closer, you're losing. So, yeah, maybe it's a little closer. Maybe it'll be a no play for me well, then. Well, you know, I think the story of this Bellator card is I think a lot of these underdogs are, are decent bets, like the Javi Ayala versus uh, Roy Nelson. Roy L Nelson's lost seven of his last ten fights. He's a minus 300 favorite in this fight, and Javi Ayala could punch. The guy's got heavy hands. He knocked out Sergei Karatonov cold with one punch. And, uh, you know, heavyweight fight, I'm, I'm thinking you're probably going to want to bet to under in this one, but that's another underdog that might not be a bad play. Yeah, I actually like the, under, the underdog here, too, and I don't really want to bet the under because Roy Nelson's chin is so good. Like, he actually hangs yeah. in fights pretty good. He could take a punch. Um, I, I just feel like Javi Ayala, forget about the fact that his last two wins are both first-round knockouts. The Sergey Karatanov was, what, 16 seconds? or One punch, It was too. one punch, yeah. yeah. That was the and whole fight. So I don't know that this fight's going to be there, but Javi Ayala is athletic enough. He can actually do some other stuff. I think, you know, of his 10 wins, like three or four were actually submissions, too. So, he, you know, he can wrestle a little bit. Yeah, he has a submission over Rafael Butler, who yeah. actually... Uh, was a Golden Gloves national champion uh, the, the year I went to the nationals and made wow. it to the third round. I was one win away from, from uh, fighting him. Wow. So, and he was a pretty good boxer. He was good hands. But, uh, yeah, Ayala was smart in that fight and got it to the ground and submitted him. Um, but, yeah, I don't see him submitting Roy Nelson. But uh, two, plus 250, Maybe I think he can just outwork him. I think it's a good underdog. Look, Roy Nelson's 41 years old, and to your point, lost seven of his last 10, and he's two and five in his last seven. I mean, in one of those wins out of the two and five is a knockout win over Bigfoot Silva when Bigfoot was after Roy's Bigfoot, when yeah, everyone, when no you know, the wind blew yeah. and he went down, so... Another uh, one was against uh, uh, Noguera with a ton of miles Yeah, on. that's so. right. <laughs> I mean, and everyone else just, he looked bad. Volkov dominated him. Derek Lewis, you know, was beating him up at the end of that fight, even though Roy was probably out wrestling him. But, yeah, I, I could see Javi Ayala definitely having some value in taking a shot there. I don't know that I want to bet the under because it's only one and a half and it's even. Yeah. And Roy tends to hang in fights, and I don't think Roy has that, you know, that right hand's always been a weapon, but it doesn't seem like it comes as fast anymore. Yeah, well, another underdog I think uh, you mentioned you like is uh, Yamauchi. He's a plus 160 underdog. Are you going to put a little play on that one? This one I bet already, and I'm gonna pro I may bet again. Uh, I like Adam Piccolotti as a prospect, and I finally got a chance because he's been on so many um, non-televised undercards for Bellator. I finally got a chance in the last fight to watch a whole fight of him. Three rounds of Brandon Gertz. Brandon Gertz, a tough guy. Um, and Piccolotti was pretty impressive, but he, he wasn't overwhelmingly impressive. How right? does y Yamauchi get it, get it done this one? 18 out of 21 wins by uh, submission. He has one of the best submission rates I've ever seen on any fighter. And look, we've had a chance to see him fight a bunch of times in Bellator. Is I think he catches him in a scramble to get this fight to the ground. Yeah, and I think the fight's going to go to Piccolotti's the ground. Piccolotti's going to want to keep it standing. He may, but he tends to go to the ground as well, too. They both like to go to the ground. They're both comfortable there, so I don't know that it's not going to go there. Uh, and I don't know that Piccolotti will dominate him standing up. I mean, Yamuchi's been solid in his Bellator career. At that price of an underdog, I think he can catch him in a scramble. Maybe his submissions are unbelievable in scrambles. I'm going to take a shot with him. So there you have it. The story of Bellator is it is night of the underdogs. Patricky Pitbull, not a bad underdog. Except but, the first fight. Giant, Aaron Pico. Um, oh, yeah. I, yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. I'm not even talking <laughs> yeah, about yeah. that one. Yeah. But uh, Patricky Pitbull, not a bad underdog. He's about a two to one. Jay Alla, Alla plus two fifty dog. Paul Daly, a plus two forty dog, and Yamauchi, a plus one sixty dog. All of those aren't bad bets. Not uh, not a bad idea putting small plays on any of those fights, in my opinion. And, and the one thing I will say about this Justin Lin kid who's fighting Aaron Pico. You know, Aaron Pico switched trainers. Now he's fighting with Antonio McKee. Uh, A.J. McKee's dad, and uh, he dropped down to 145, the same weight class that A.J. McKee fights at, and they found him a guy who on paper you'd go, oh, this is, 
you know, they paid him a bunch of money to come over. This is a fight he's supposed yeah, to win. He's gonna win. That Justin Lin, he's lost his last two fights in a row, but one of them's to a current UFC guy in Matthew Lopez, and his other f- loss was to Chad Gibson, a for- I mean, Cody Gibson, a former UFC guy. So, I mean, Lin's been in there with some guys who can fight, huh. if nothing else. And, I mean, and, I, and yeah, I also think that. Uh, uh, well, I thought part of the reason that Paul Daly was uh, such a big underdog is because the way he lost his last fight. But Rory McDonald is amazing on the ground, and Lorenz yeah. Larkin isn't. And I think that kind of went into uh, the, the odds. That's what I thought, at least, when I first saw him. I was expecting that to be a little closer. I saw a little value in that. And, yeah, Bellator. Well, the records, too. I mean, Paul Daly has, what, like 14 losses or something now. I mean, yeah, and a lot more fights. Yeah. Yeah, he's like 30. He has like 50 fights, like 35 and 14 or 35 and 13 or something like that. Yeah. 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 But like, yeah, as to your point, um, he tends to lose to solid wrestlers. And, um, you know, if a guy's going to have a kickboxing match with them, that's his best chance. He couldn't pray for anything better. Watch, Lorenz is going to come out and try wrestling him. Uh, <laughs> I just don't see it happening. Yeah, like, no, I've never like, seen him yeah, do it. Yeah. No. yeah. Just but Douglas Lima didn't need to the, – the fight that I compared this to. They both lost to Lima. They did. But I always said, okay, let me think of another guy who beat Daly but didn't wrestle him that much. And I looked at Lima a little bit, and when they exchanged on the feet, Lima was better. And how about uh, Lima versus uh, Larkin? Lima beat Larkin. Pretty convincingly yeah. unanimous decision, too. He dominated both of them. He, he, he's and they were both stand-up up. Yeah, fights. Yeah. Yeah. And so, he dominated both. Interesting. So maybe point. they're a little closer than I thought. So, yeah, some uh, good value there, betting the dogs on Bellator. Um, those are my kind of picks. I like finding underdogs. And uh, going on to UFC Fight Night 117, this is in Japan, and a lot of mismatches here. In the main event, you got Yushin Okami, who's uh, a welterweight pretty much, fighting OSP, who's a big light heavyweight. And minus 500, not my type of bet to bet the favorite, but this seems like a lock. Yeah, and unfortunately for UFC, and this this could be why, with all the withdrawals nowadays, that they don't go to Japan a lot. It's hard to get a visa on short notice in Japan. And when Shogun Hua pulled out of this fight, they didn't have a lot of options. In steps Yushin Okami, who, to your point, his last five fights all at <laughs> 170 pounds. Interestingly enough, though, there's only one uh, one-inch height difference, like a two-inch reach difference. Yushin was always a tall guy, but you're going to see a yeah. size, a massive but, size but difference. But Yushin's biggest strength is his grappling. And like with that type of size disadvantage, I, I don't see how he's going to outgrapple OSP. I heard Yushin didn't cut, and he weighed in at 203.5. OSP did get right at the 206 cutting, uh, and he is so much bigger than Okami in this and fight. And five rounds trying to just handle that type of weight difference, I think it's going to exhaust Okami. And he's taking it on short notice. Yeah, the one thing I, I did look at playing maybe was uh, initially I was thinking about playing the over. I don't want to lay a dollar sixty. I thought Okami... I thought the one thing that's tricky for both guys in this fight is that they're both southpaws. And southpaws aren't always used to fighting southpaws because so many of the guys you fight are orthodox. So sometimes it could be tricky for a southpaw to figure a southpaw out. I thought, well, maybe they get a round or two out of it before OSP puts them to sleep somewhere, either from on the top position or on the feet. So... um, Unlike, I know you put a, a big one down on the Floyd Mayweather and it was similar kind of odds. You're not going to do that here. I'm thinking about it. I just, I, I don't know yet. I, I'm trying to figure out in my mind, how does Yushin Okami win this yes, fight? And that's I what can. I want to make sure. Yeah. Like in my mind with the Mayweather one where I made, yeah, it's a big, <laughs> yeah. big bet. Uh, I couldn't find a way that Connor would beat him. I knew that Connor didn't punch hard for a boxer. So that was never my worry. I'm like, how does Floyd lose? He breaks his ankle. He slips on the wall. You know. It was really rare stuff. And I'm trying to figure out how does Okami win. And I, d- I don't want to get too caught up in the weight difference here because Ovin St. Peru is, what, two and three in his last five in the UFC? Granted, those losses are to John Jones, Glover to Shara, real tough, light heavyweights, not 170 pounds. And, and the other part is Yushin Okami is not 28 years old, jumping up, going to have this big speed advantage. He's 30. He's the older guy by four years or something, or at least a couple years in this fight. And I, I just don't, I can't think of how he wins. He's not a big puncher. He's yep. not a big striker. He's not he's a, a d- he's dynamo a submission guy. Yeah, he's a grinder. It's, yep. 
It's hard to imagine him winning this fight. There is and, a chance. And not getting maybe tired of five rounds trying to, to, to lift up this heavy LSP. Oh, my gosh. That's going to be a handful. Maybe this so. one is worth laying the 500. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think so, too. Yeah. That's why yeah, I kind of, you know, if there's one thing to take away from this show, um, on the Bellator card, bet the dogs on the UFC <laughs> card. Bet the, bet the favorites. favorites. Yeah. It'll even itself out, <laughs> yeah. and you'll go home with money in your pockets. So uh, co-main event, Jessica Andrade versus Claudia Gardella. Claudia minus two fifty favorite, and I, I mean, just judging by her last performance and her only losses being to the current champ, um, I, you know, I, I like her in this fight. I think it's a lock. She's been on fire. She wants that title. She's hungry. Uh, she kind of proved that in her last fight, and um, I, I, you know, I'm thinking of putting a little play on her too. I'm thinking about making a small play on the under in this fight. And before that, I was like, oh, all of Godhila's fights are going to go the distance. She's not really a puncher. You know, she's maybe she submitted lower level people, but she started to really be on fire with her submissions and her strikings got a lot better. And we know she's ripped. Uh, she's in strong. unbelievable yeah. shape and strong. But act, with the way Jessica Andrade fights coming forward is such an aggressive striking style. I think, A, she's going to walk into the straight left hand by Claudia Gadela, and B, she's also going to be easier to be taken down because she's walking into it anyway so aggressively. I actually think this may set up for a potential knockout, cut, stoppage, submission, and at plus 150, I'm going to take a little shot that this one doesn't go the distance. That's a good point. And right when I was thinking of putting the play on uh, Claudia at minus 250, I look at... Dong Stun Kun Kim at minus 300. Why not just bet him? I think this is more of a lock. He's a huge 170 pounder who's only lost to the top of the division. Guys like Carlos I think Condit. you're thinking of Dong Young Kim, the other guy. There's two Dong Young Kims in UFC. Oh my God. They have the same exact name. And they both go by Stun Gun? No, this one is the Maestro. Uh, this you know is what? Dong you're Young right. Kim, the Maestro. So maestro, okay. maestro, have you? You are it? right. Yes, yeah. I was thinking this was stun gun. So <laughs> exact same name. This is maestro <laughs> dropping down to fifty five. Yeah, I should have known because Kim is pretty much like Smith in Korea. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> it's a really common name. So yeah, I thought, oh my god, they got a, a hundred seventy pounder fighting a you know uh, a, a guy who's smaller and uh, Takanormi Gomi, but. Um, no, this is they're both fifty fivers, and uh, good good thing I checked with you on that, Matt. Well, Kim is dropping down from seventy, but he was a small seventy. This one, the Maestro this one, one. Uh, and they're both super aggressive punchers. The problem is, this is one of those fights where the fact that this line is minus three hundred, I think it tells you something about what it really should be. Because Takanori Gomi is the name here. He's a legend in our sport. I remember watching his U.S. his U.S. debut against uh, Nick Diaz at Thomas yeah. and Mac uh -huh. on a Pride card, and what amazing fight that was! And uh, he knocked out Jens Pulver, and I mean, yeah. Gomi was awesome. I mean, this is a true legend of the sport. He's probably going to end up in either a Pride or UFC or some type of Hall of Fames. And this guy's a legend. He's the name here. For him to be that big of a plus against a guy who most people don't he, have never heard of, an A mistake for stun gun, uh, I have <laughs> yeah. even before, um, it probably should even be bigger. And the fact that Kim's going to come after him, I mean, I wrote it down. I'm trying to remember how many fights in a row now no, uh, Gomi has lost, but it's bad. It, a lot. Yeah, exactly a lot. At this point, it's uh, four straight and five of his last six he's lost. And, and hasn't even made that the first round. That's right. He so. just doesn't look competitive anymore. And the last time he got a win in 2014 was against Isaac Valley Flag, who, I mean, I, I just don't think Gomi can fight anymore. I think he should probably be retired. They're giving him a kind of a heyday in Japan, but there's no way I could bet him here. Yeah, this is a swan song, I believe. Yeah. Um, Gokan Saki making his UFC debut. He had one MMA fight in 04, and he's actually a minus 160 favorite I against Enrique De Silva. I, I bet Silva twice already, <laughs> and I, I, 
I, someone needs to stop me from continuing yeah. to bet him. The whole thing, the only thing I don't like about taking Silva is Kokan Saki's so dangerous. This yes. guy knocks people out in K1, and Henrique De Silva isn't the best wrestler. You think it wouldn't take much wrestling to get Saki down, but, you know, uh, I think Saki's got that puncher's chance. But, uh, yeah, uh, at plus 140, that, that might be a steal. This is the thing that concerns me even more than the wrestling dynamic of this fight is, um, you know, everyone, a, a lot of people, I don't want to say everyone because a lot of people laid huge money on Floyd Mayweather like I did, but there was a contingency of people that said, hey, Conor McGregor can hang with Floyd Mayweather because look how good he punches in MMA. Kickboxing in MMA isn't the same. And one of the things I think that really stood out to me is the amount of spinning crazy attacks that Saki does. Yeah, great at the spinning. Spinning back kicks. fist, spinning heel kicks. And in a lot of those attacks in, in K1 or in uh, Glory, you can miss and be way out of position and it'd be okay. Like there's no one's going to take you down or come up and elbow you in the face for doing it. If you do those in UFC and miss, you're going to be very vulnerable. Yeah, I think if this fight like, ends up on the can he even try ground, those? Yeah, can yeah. he even try those moves in MMA? The one thing that makes me reluctant to bet Silva is Saki is a puncher. He, yeah, he oh, yes. And hands. he's the bigger guy because he, he was a heavyweight in, yeah, his whole in kickboxing. Been yes, yeah, and Silva's a 205er. So. And they're fighting this at 205. Yeah. So I heard Saki cut all the weight because he was never a huge heavyweight, no. like 230, two, high 220s. He's cutting down to 205. He is going to be a monstrous 205. Yeah, with those little gloves on, that's why, why I was reluctant to bet Silva. Cause if he touches Saki him, he could, could put the lights out. And, I yeah. mean, any good coach will be like, go kind, just use your hands. No, no Don't kicking. Kicks. Yeah. Don't even lift your legs up. Keep your feet planted. So it's interesting to see. Uh, if but I don't know that he should that. be a favorite. A guy who yeah. has one fight yeah. and, yeah. and it was 13 years ago and he's a favorite against... Although I will say this, Silva is, what, 0-3 in his last three in the UFC and hasn't looked great. And those aren't big names that are beating Silva. It was Paul Craig, uh, Kutabella, like. Kutabella in the last one, which is like 20 seconds. He knocked him out in the first yeah. round. Yeah, and it didn't take much. No, yeah. Little, I mean, Silva is not on the best run. No, so he doesn't have the best chin. So... Um, I'm still, I bet the dog already twice, so I'm in. It's too late for me, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting fight, to say the least. Because it's another one of these crossover fights where you, you just don't know. Going down the card, Ishihara versus Dai. That one, uh, pretty close. Uh, Ishihara, minus 140 favorite in that. And uh, I just didn't see anything I, I really um, loved. In, in I didn't either. I, I saw uh, you know some of the guys I follow on Twitter and stuff like Dan Tom, um, like to die as an underdog there, and I really didn't, so I passed. The only other one that stood out to me that I already bet was Charles Rosa, which opened 170, went to 180. It's already minus 200 because Hirota I missed just, weight by four. I just four. got it at 190. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a great number now. Uh, Hirota not only missed weight by four pounds, but was so dehydrated, like was couldn't they had to be helped off the scales and. Do you think that was theatrics, or do you believe it was he really? No, he that? looked bad. He had the look of like Skeletor trying to make weight. He looked bad, and he, even if he didn't have all those weight issues, which he clearly did today at the weigh-ins, he's the. I think he's way past his prime. This was a guy who used to be able to take a lot of shots and stay in fights. Hasn't been taking shots as well lately. And I think Rosa, the, the up-and-coming stronger guy, Rosa was clearly winning his whole last fight till he got caught in the third round and knocked out against a tougher guy than Hirota. I think Rosa was the right side anyway, add in the fact that Hirota had a horrible weight cut, and I really like Charles Rosa, although the, the temperature and the price, unfortunately, are rising for us there. Yeah, well, I like Rosa, too, because Hirota's never been a dangerous puncher, the no. type of guy that could end it. He's like a grinder. He gets you down, wears you down with his size. And, I mean, if he had that tough of a weight cut, he's not going to have the energy to do that for very long. Maybe yeah. he gets one round to grind and before he starts to fade. Yeah, um, and he doesn't take punches as well as he used to. He used to be a tough. He used to be able to eat shots to get you down and yeah. and grind you out. But I just don't think he Chin's eats them as well. The same. Yeah. And when you cut that much weight, that, uh, it's yeah. hard on your chin. You yeah. can't take a punch as well. So other than that, uh, 
Uh, the only other fight I was looking at is Keitaro Nakamura against Alex Morono. Um, Keitaro, he's, he's been in there with kind of the best, but this Morono is, is a young, tough guy. But this fight is uh, pretty close. You got uh, plus 120 uh, Nakamura right now. Wow. What are your thoughts on that? I couldn't figure this one out either, right? I, look, I remember when we did the UFC Mexico City card and we played so many of these these ho- close fights, the, the Mexican guy, figuring we were going to get that hometown judging, and we did. I'll be the first to admit, I bet Eric Perez he lost the fight, but he won the fight and I cashed my ticket. <laughs> because, he, you know, you get, the crowd may get so loud and into it that the judges can't help but sometimes be swayed a little bit yeah. if it's close. And that's kind of what I thought about this one. I went, man, I think... If you gave me 130, if I waited and shopped around and I could get 130, yeah, I could lay with Morono. But I said, you add in that home advantage here. The cr- and those ch- crowds in Japan are really into the fights, too. I just don't know. I, I didn't know how to react to it, and I ended up leaving it alone. Well, all right. I think if there's one uh, moral, det- uh, moral of the, the, the story for this weekend in terms of Bellator and the UFC, it's... The UFC bet the favorites, Bellator, go with the dogs. And uh, that's uh, what I'm going to do. Um, so far, the only one I bet on the UFC fight night is uh, the Charles Rosa because Hirota missed weight and looks so weak. But um, there, yeah, I might go back and take a little stab at uh, Claudia Gardella as well. So there you have it. Um, that's about it. Um, Oh, man. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm taking Paul Daly for sure. So. All right. <laughs> Those are my friends. So. I might play a little parlay and include Luke Jamo as well as Juicier Formiga uh, on that UFC undercard yeah. as well because that felt like a mismatch you know, for me. It's a big number. If there's ever a, a time to put a parlay together, it's when this you got card. a couple huge favorites yeah. like that, that are the, locks. That's right. Much, so that so. way we're not laying any huge money on any of them. Maybe we'll put some big some parlays together with some of that's, those favorites. That's a good point. Nice. And, and this Bellator card is going to be fun. It, it, it didn't have the most underdogs I'd ever seen that I wanted to bet, even though I'll probably end up on the dog in most fights, except for a little Larkin. But, uh, but it, they're so meaningful. They're entertaining fights, right? You, they're guys you know you want to root for and, and you want to watch fight. You recognize yeah. And, yeah, you're I think it's a good invested. card. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> awesome. All right. For Matthew Hole, I'm Stefan Bonner. Enjoy the UFC Friday for a change because it's in Japan and the Bellator card on Saturday. But the dogs in Bellator, if there's ever a time to parlay, it's UFC fight night in Japan. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week on the final round.